Hey guys, this is Mike, and this is part two of the LibGDX Box Studio tile tutorial. So in this video, we're going to take a step back from the game and work on doing some basic Box 2D stuff. So first off, what is Box 2D? It's a physics engine, simulates physics for us, and the way that it works is that you have this world. It's basically the Box 2D universe and everything that we do go happens inside this world so for example if we want to add objects in the world we want to first um, create body create a body these are rigid bodies and these are like bodies by themselves aren't really anything um, they're just containers if you want to create actual objects you have to create something called fixtures. So a body is just a container that contains a bunch of fixtures. So for example, uh, if you wanted to make a car, then you would create like a circle fixture here, circle fixture here, and a polygon shape here. So this car body contains three fixtures and that's pretty much the way it works so body is just a container for fixtures so in order to get started with creating objects in Box2D let's uh, go ahead and lay down the steps here first we're gonna create the world then next if we want to create bodies first we have to define the body and then create it using that body definition and next we want to define fixtures define fixture and then create fixtures based on that definition anytime we create any objects in here we always have to tell the parent container that we're making it so when we create a body we have to say to the world oh world we're gonna we're gonna make a body right here and when we're making fixtures we also have to tell the body that we're adding it to that uh, we're making a new fixture here so this is as simple as it gets I think um, if you want to go more in depth in Box2D then you can go to the box2d.org slash manual.html and pretty much all your Box2D questions should be answered in there since that's the manual for that so I want to keep things simple and just lay everything out like this so step one create world let's go ahead and do that uh, from the previous video we already have the play state fixed so just get rid of all this we don't need that or this okay so let's go ahead create world call it world and create it over here now the constructor for world takes two arguments. The first one is going to be a vector2. And this vector2 is the gravity pretty much. So x and y. We're just going to use regular gravity, so nothing in the x direction and we're going to be pulling downwards in the y direction. And let's just use earth's regular gravity acceleration, which is 9.8 meters per second. Per second so that's negative 9.81 F and the second argument for world is a boolean we're gonna set that to true basically this boolean set to true means that any bodies that are inactive in the world are put to sleep and bodies that are asleep are I guess they're not calculated for collision I'm not exactly sure but um, basically it makes it so that the world update runs a little bit faster by ignoring all these calculations on bodies that are asleep. So in update, let's go ahead and update the world. Let me move this down. And in order to update the world, we do something called world.step. And this is why I wanted to use fixed time steps, because if you keep changing the time step for world, it kind of messes up the simulation, I guess. So over here, dt is fixed to step of 1 divided by 60, so 
Yep, and that's all good. Velocity iterations. This is just the accuracy of like the collision. How many steps you want each body to check for collision. Uh, they recommend six or eight here. I'll use six. Position iterations. This is the accuracy of setting the body's position after a collision. And the recommended value is two or three, whichever. Um, for the actual game, I just used one and one. I don't really need to be that accurate for that pixel platformer. But uh, six and two. Let's keep it at that. Um, all right. Step one done. Uh, wait. Before we get any further, let's create the box 2D debug renderer. I'll call this B2DR, and this class is going to render all the bodies for us. So B2DR is new box 2D debug renderer, like that. And we're going to render over here. We're going to do B2DR dot render render the world using cam.combined. Okay, so if we render the world right now, there's nothing in it because we haven't created anything. So let's move on to step two, define body, and step three, create body. And over here we're gonna do create platform, just a platform box. So first thing, step two, define the body. We're gonna define the body using a class called body def new body def and here we can set the properties of the body like um, I'll just call this B def actually B def dot we can set like the position let's just set it at 160 120 that's the center of the screen since the game is 320 by 240 um, we can set other stuff like the damping velocity stuff like that but uh, for now the most important ones that we need are position and type body type dot static now there are three types of bodies static body is uh, they don't move at all unaffected by forces but you can still set the position manually if you want there's another type called dynamic bodies these are the bodies that always get affected by forces um, so, for example, the bunny, the bunny uh, player in the game would be a dynamic body because you can apply forces to it, set the linear, whatever. And there's something in between these two called kinematic bodies, and these are like they don't get affected by the world forces, but you can change. Um, their velocities, I guess. Uh, can you set their forces manually? I'm not exactly sure. But, uh, for example, an example of a static body would be like the ground. It, sh it doesn't move. Dynamic body would be a player. And a kinematic body would be like a moving platform. So you notice how a moving platform is unaffected by gravity, but it still moves around. So that's what a kin kinematic body would be. So those are the three types of bodies. Um, we're not going to use kinematic bodies at all, just static and dynamic. So the platform is going to be a static body, it's not going to move anywhere. And that's step two, define the body. Now step three, create the body. So body body is equal to world.create body, using that body def. So like I said, anytime you want to create an object, you always have to tell the parent cont container about it. So when we create a body, we have to tell the world, oh, we want to create this body, using this body definition. Okay, so if we run it now, you'll notice that we don't see anything at all because, like I said before, a body is nothing, it's just a container. If you want to create actual objects, you have to create fixtures. So we're going to do that now. Step four, define fixture. And we're going to use fixture def class for that. Fixture def. There we go. And here um, we can set a bunch of properties for the fixture, density, um, friction, filter, that's for collision, sensor, restitution, that's like elasticity, shape, this is the one that we want. Uh, we can set the shape for the fixture. So first of all, we need to create a new shape object. 
um, new polygon shape, import that, and we're going to set the shape to be a box, set as box of size mm, 105. This is half width and half height by the way, so the box is going to be 100 by 10. So we're going to set the fixture to that shape. And finally, we're going to do body.createFixture using that fixture definition. So again, we want to create a fixture for the body, so we have to tell the body that we're creating the fixture using this definition. So that's done, step 5. So that's pretty much it. Let's see what we got. All right, so we got this uh, body with one fixture, just box, pretty much, and that's it. So nothing special is going on here. Um, let's go ahead and create one more body. Create falling box. Now uh, we can reuse the body definitions and such and the shapes, whatever, because when you create them, they the values are copied over. So you can always just um, reuse them. So body def dot position dot set. This time we're going to set it a little bit higher at 200 and we're going to change the type to dynamic. Since this is a falling box, it has to be dynamic if you want it to be affected by gravity. And we're going to create that new body, world.createBody using the body def. And shape, we're going to set the size to 5.5, five, which is 10 by 10. And the fixture def, I don't even know if you need to do this because it's already up here and I didn't really change anything so but whatever I'm gonna put that in it anyway so body.createFixture uh, using that fixture definition there we go and there it is okay and there's some rendering issue I forgot to clear the screen so back down here and render um, let's just clear screen and over here draw box 2d world so clear screen is um, using GDX or OpenGL. Uh, GL10 dot GL clear, yeah, and GL10 dot using the clear color. Okay. So there we go. There's our box, platform and box, and box falls onto the platform. We can change a bunch of stuff. Um, for example, the box. We can set the fixture, uh, fdef, uh, for example, the restitution is the elasticity, the bounciness of it. We can set this from 0 to 1, so if we set it to 1, then it's going to be perfectly bouncy. Oops. So over here, you'll notice that it bounces perfectly up to the same height, which is right here. And there we go okay and you know we can set a bunch of properties for the fixture like that using the fixture definition okay so the next thing I want to get into is box 2d units um, we've already defined how to create objects in the world using bodies and fixtures and now I want to get into the box 2d units you'll notice that I used negative 9.81, however, the box looks like it's moving in slow motion. Why is it moving so slow? Well, the thing is, the box actually isn't moving slow at all. It's, it is being pulled down at 9.8 meters per second. How is that even possible? It doesn't look like it's moving 9.8 meters per second. Um, so you have to be aware of the units that box 2 uses. box 2 uses the MKS units. M, K, S. This is meters, and this is kilograms, and this is seconds. This is the thing that trips up everybody when they first start using box 2 d You have to realize that box 2 d uses meters for their distance units. So. Um, if you don't do any scaling at all, you're basically saying that one pixel is equal to one meter. So if we go back to the thing here, 
This box is 10 by 10, so this is a 10 meter by 10 meter box, which is huge. And this platform over here is 100 meters wide, so this thing is bigger than a football field. So, obviously, you using um, this one-to-one -one ratio is bad, and it's recommended to change it. So we have to keep a ratio of pixels to meters. Um, common one would be like 100 pixels per meter. So um, this is the conversion unit that we have to use. Uh, we're we're going to use for this example. Uh, we go into handlers. I'm going to create a new class to handle all of the box 2 d variables. I'll just call this B2D vars. And this is just going to have a bunch of uh, variables. PPM, pixels per meter, 100 pixels per meter. And I'm going to import that up here. Import static. Uh, bunny handlers B2D vars dot PPM. This import static basically just imports this one variable into this class so I can use the ppm variable myself. Um, so over here, world body, whenever we're dealing with box2d we always have to use this conversion. Since I'm using 100 uh, pixels per meter I have to divide all this by that. So the position the size all have to be divided. Uh, divided by ppm here and here. So now if we run the game you'll notice that we don't see anything anymore. Uh, they're all the way down here. They're in this tiny ass box. You can't even see it. It's just a dot in the bottom left corner because they're all a hundred times smaller pretty much. Which is fine. This is perfectly fine. We want to use this conversion units. The problem is we can't see them anymore so we have to change our camera. So we're going to create a new camera over here, orthographic camera. Let's call this uh, Box2D Cam, B2D Cam. And we're going to set the camera. Set up Box2D Cam. Uh, B2D Cam is equal to new orthographic camera. and. Um, the regular cameras are uh, V width and V height, so they have uh, game dot V width, game dot V height. Uh, import those. Okay, so the regular cameras are 320 by 240. However, the box 2D camera that we're using has to be divided by the ratio of pixels per meter. So we're going to use this box2d camera for drawing all the box2d stuff. So instead of cam.combine here, we're going to use b2d cam.combine. So let's run it now, and you can see that this box now moves a lot faster, and it moves regularly, because 100 pixels is uh, 1 meter. So this is the thing that trips up most of the new box2d users, so if you're simulation is running slow you probably did not use any conversions for that so make sure you use a conversion because you know this box that's supposed to be a hundred by ten pixels is if you don't use any conversions it's gonna be a hundred meters by ten meters which is huge so for example the bunny the bunny is a uh, thirty by thirty pixels if I didn't use any conversions, then that bunny, the box 2D would think that bunny is the size of a 10 story building, pretty much. So, you have to change. You have to use these conversion units. Um, I guess that's going to be all that I want to do for right now for this video. Um, just, you know, the basics adding objects to the box 2D world. Um, I guess that's going to be it for this video. In the next video, I'm going to continue talking more about Box2D, and the next video is going to deal with contacts between bodies, collisions. So I'm going to save that for the next one. Thanks for watching.